Right, uh, the third video on 3.10 trig equations and inequalities. Uh, starting with equations, so we need to solve for x in the interval of 0 to 2 pi. Uh, so we're going to isolate, of course, sine x. So 2 sine x is equal to root 3 taken on the other side, so it becomes negative root 3. Dividing both sides with 2 sine x will be equal to negative root 3 over 2. And I think we discussed this that uh, uh, first always find out that sine is negative in which two quadrants. So it's quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. Then find the reference angle of this. Reference angle means just uh, avoid the negative sign and think about uh, the quadrant 1 angle where sine is root 3 over 2. So sine is root 3 over 2 and pi at pi over 3, right? You got to remember the unit circle for that, guys. So that's uh, in pi over 3. So uh, now I'm going to swing the pi over 3 to quadrant 3. So the way we swing that in quadrant 3 will be pi plus pi over 3. And in quadrant 4, it's going to be pi, sorry, 2 pi minus pi over 3, right? That's the standard way in which we do that, in which we do that. <laughs> so this is going to be... 4 pi over 3 and this is going to be 3 to 6 5 pi over 3, right? These are the uh, two answers for this question. Okay, uh, let's try this one. So 6 cos x adding 1 both the sides becomes 3. Uh, dividing by 6 both the sides become 3. It becomes 3 over 6 and 3 over 6 is 1 half. Uh, find out where is cos positive, obviously in quadrant 1 and the next is in quadrant 4. So what is the quadrant 1 angle, which is also a reference angle? It's again pi over 3, uh, just like the, again I'm saying because in question 1 also it was pi over 3. So it's pi over 3, that is one answer of course. And the quadrant 4, if we want to swing, that will be 2 pi minus pi over 3, which is 5 pi over 3. So these are the two answers for these two, uh, for this question. All right, uh, talking about tan, once again, we're going to do the same activity. Uh, 4 tan of x is equal to subtracting 7 both the sides. I have negative 4 and tan of x dividing 4 both the sides. We have negative 1. So from here, I'm going to have two solutions. I'm going to have, uh, um, uh, I'm going to decide that where it is, uh, you know, negative. Uh, it is negative in quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. Uh, and the reference angle for tan x equal to 1 is pi over 4. That's in quadrant 1, of course. So if I want to swing the pi over 4 in quadrant 2, that's going to be pi minus pi over 4. And in quadrant 2, that's going to be 2 pi minus pi over 4. So that's going to look like 3 pi over 4. That's the first thing over here. And for the it's 7 pi over 4. That's the second solution over here. Okay, uh, for this one, I'm going to subtract one both, sorry, five both the sides, so it becomes one. And I'm going gonna to divide both sides with root three, so it becomes one over root three. Uh, tan is positive in uh, quadrant one and quadrant three. And quadrant one, which is also the reference angle, that's going to be pi over six. Once again, unit circle. And from quadrant three, I mean, when I say unit circle, I'm just concentrating on uh, the quadrant one of the unit circle or if you just write up the bad remember the values that's also totally fine uh, quadrant three will be pi plus pi over six right pi plus pi over six which is seven pi over six so that's that will be our second solution okay uh, changing some patterns here uh, subtracting three both the sides we have two uh, dividing 8 both the sides we have 1 over 4 and taking square root both the sides we have don't forget plus and minus 1 over 2 because square root of 4 is 2. So now we have two um, as in solutions for that. Uh, one is when cos is 1 over 2 and the other one when it is negative 1 over 2. But honestly, I mean, see, cos is either positive 1 over 2 or negative 1 over 2. Obviously, it's going to give solutions in all the four quadrants because this will give solution in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. And cos is negative in quadrant 2 and quadrant 3. So honestly, I need solutions in all the four quadrants, right? So let's find the reference angle first, which is going to be pi over 3. Then the quadrant 2 will be pi minus pi over 3, which is 2 pi over 3. 
quadrant 3 will be pi plus pi over 3, which is 4 pi over 3. And quadrant 4 will be 2 pi minus pi over 3, which is 5 pi over 3. So that's going to be our, well, four answers. Over here, uh, I'm going to add 5 both the sides, so this becomes 6. I'm going to divide both sides with 2, so this becomes 3. I'm going to take square root on both the sides, so this becomes plus minus square root of 3. Once again, we have two solutions, which means that, I mean, the positive of the same thing and negative, positive of a thing and negative of the same thing, which means that uh, we have solutions in all the four quadrants. Um, uh, so this will give solutions in uh, quadrant one and quadrant three. This will give solutions in quadrant two and quadrant four. Uh, in quadrant one, the reference angle for root three is going to be pi over three. Uh, and well, fortunately, the same was the answer over here as well, right, as in the reference angle. Uh, so I'm just gonna, you know, copy all these angles because the calculation is already there. So quadrant two was two pi over three from here. Uh, quadrant 3 is 4 pi over 3 from here and quadrant 4 is 5 pi over 3 from here. All right, excellent. Okay, more questions. Uh, 6 sine square x is equal to, well, 12 minus 9 is uh, 3. Uh, I'm going to divide both sides with 6 so that becomes 1 over 2. And in a similar fashion, I'll take square root of both the sides. So I'll get plus minus 1 over square root of 2. Uh, plus 1 over square root of 2 has a reference angle of pi over 4. And now we understand we have to find basically solutions in all the four quadrants. So it's pi over 4. Then quadrant 2 will be pi minus pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 4. Quadrant 3 will be pi plus pi over 4, which is 5 pi over 4. And uh, quadrant 4 will be 2 pi minus pi over 4, which is 7 pi over 4. So this is 1, this is 1, and this is 1, and this one as well. Okay, I'm going to likewise subtract 2 both the sides, so that becomes 3. So sine square x is equal to 3 over 4. If I take square root both the sides, then sine x is plus minus square root 3, and the square root of 4 is just 2. Okay. Again, in all the four, sorry, I'm saying 2, but I'm writing 4. This is 2. Uh, uh, the solution is once again in all the four quadrants. So in quadrant 1, the solution will be pi over 3. That's also a reference angle. Then the quadrant 2 will be pi minus pi over 3, which is 2 pi over 3. And it will be pi plus pi over 3, which is 4 pi over 3. And then it is 2 pi minus pi over 3, which is 5 pi over 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Um, same questions, I mean, same uh, concept asked in different form. If fx is this and gx is this, then in the xy plane, what are the coordinates, x coordinates of the points of intersection of f and g in? Uh, uh, a unit circle as in 0 to 2 pi. So they intersect when they are equal, of course. So I'm going to say that fx is equal to gx, which means that 2 cos x is equal to negative root 2, which means that dividing both sides with 2, I have negative root 2 over 2. Uh, cos is negative in quadrant 2 and quadrant 3. Uh, however, the reference angle, if we just consider root 2 over 2, will be pi over 4, right? So the quadrant 2 angle will be pi minus pi over 4, and quadrant 3 angle will be pi plus pi over 4, uh, which is going to be 3 pi over 4, and this is going to be 5 pi over 4. Uh, similarly, same question, they're asking... Um, points of intersection, so I'm going to say fx is equal to gx, uh, that's when they intersect, so fx is equal to gx means that sine x is equal to 2 sine square x, which means that I'm going to I'll move sine x on the other side, so 2 sine square x minus sine x, uh, I'm going to flip the omelet, so 2 sine square x minus sine x is equal to 0, 
taking sine x as a common factor, I'm left with 2 sine x minus 1 is equal to 0, which means that using the zero product property, I will have two solutions from here or two potential solutions from here. <clears throat> one is when sine is 0, and other is, other is when 2 sine minus 1, 2 sine x minus 1 is 0. So if sine x is equal to zero, this is a pretty straightforward answer of x is a zero and x is pi, right? Uh, again, something that I know from unit circle. And when two sine x, obviously uh, x is also two pi, but I'm not writing two pi as two pi is not in the restricted domain. Two sine x minus one is zero means that two sine x is equal to one, which means that sine x is equal to one over two. And 1 over 2 uh, sine is positive, uh, you know, all students take calculus in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. In quadrant 2, uh, when is sine 1 over 2? Pi over 6, correct? And the quadrant 2 angle likewise would be pi minus pi over 6, which is 5 pi over 6. So we have 1, 2, 3, and 4 solutions. Now, fx and gx. So, I'm going to say fx is equal to gx. Once again, points of intersection. So, 4 cos square x plus 5 is equal to 8, which means that 4 cos square x is equal to 3, which means that cos square x is equal to 3 over 4. And taking square root on both the sides, cos x is equal to plus minus root 3 over 2. Well, this looks similar to what we did earlier right because we know that plus minus means that's going to give solutions in all the four quadrants the reference angle is going to be in quadrant one of course which is pi over six so that's one solution it's quadrant two solution will be pi minus pi over six which is five pi over six quadrant three solution will be pi plus pi over six which is seven pi over six and quadrant four solution will be two pi minus pi over six, which is 11 pi over six. So these are the four answers. Uh, we have to find the zeros of h in this interval. Zeros means obviously when the function, uh, function value is zero. So we just set g to zero, which means that root three cos x plus two cos x sine x is equal to zero cos x is taken as a common factor, so I'm left with root 3 plus 2 sine x is equal to 0. Uh, using the zero product property, I have two solutions here. The first one is cos x is equal to 0, and the next one will be root 3 plus 2 sine x is equal to 0. Cos x is 0, again from the unit circle, at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So these are the two solutions from here. And from here, I'm going to say that, well, 2 sine x is equal to negative root 3, which means that sine x is negative root 3 over 2. Okay. This means that uh, sine is negative in quadrant 3 and 4. Okay. So quadrant 3, quadrant 4. And the reference angle is going to be, if we skip, if we avoid this negative sign, then sine is root 3 over 2 when um, theta is pi over 6, or sorry, pi over 3. So quadrant 3 angle will be pi plus pi over 3, and quadrant 4 angle will be 2 pi minus pi over 3, which will become 4 pi over 3, and which will become, and so will become 3 or 6 pi, 5 pi over 3. So that's the final answer. Uh, we need to find what are the zeros of h. So, um, once again, h of x is equal to 0, which means that 3 tan square x minus 1 is 0, which means that 3 tan square x is equal to 1, which means that tan square x is 1 over 3, which means that tan is plus minus 1 over root 3. Now, that looks uh, obviously similar to what we did earlier. So, solutions are going to be in all the four quadrants. And uh, what is the reference angle for this? Uh, if we just take 1 over root 3, it will be pi over 6. So it's quadrant 1 solution will be pi over 6. Quadrant 2 solution will be pi minus pi over 6, which is 5 pi over 6. 
quadrant three solution will be pi plus pi over six, which is seven pi over six. And quadrant four solution will be two pi minus pi over six, which is 11 pi over six. So one, two, three, four. What are the values of theta where this happens? So something similar to what we already did. So four sine squared theta is equal to one which means that sine squared theta is one over four, taking square root both the sides. Don't forget the plus and minus. So plus minus one over square root of four is two. Once again, I'm gonna have solutions in all the four quadrants. Uh, sine is one over two in at pi over six, that's the reference angle. In quadrant two, that's gonna be pi minus pi over six, which is five pi over six. This is going to be pi plus pi over six in quadrant three, which is seven pi over six. And this is going to be two pi minus pi over six, which is 11 pi over six. So one, two, three, and four.